In the world of mob movies, two iconic films stand apart for their contrasting portrayals of the mafia underworld. The Godfather, with its romanticized depiction of tradition and honor binding mob families together, and Goodfellas, with its unflinching look at the gritty exploits of real-life gangsters. Though fictionalized, both have powerfully shaped public perception of organized crime. But which offers the more authentic view into this complex and violent world? If we start with Godfather, we have a unique position where both the source material and its film adaption are incredible feats of American creativity, with the film easily one of the top 10 films of all time. But it is fundamentally a novel conjured from the figment of Mario Puzo's imagination and research. And to be clear, Puzo may have been a second generation immigrant from Campania, Italy, home to the Camorra, and born and raised in New York City, but by his own admission, he had no connection or personal experience with the life. He drew on his own research into the five families, their structure, the code of silence, their rituals, etc., and married that with both his own experiences of Italian Italian American culture and the creative license and artistry that great authors possess. The result is an almost noble and honor bound interpretation of the mafia that ironically inspired the real life mafioso to change how they dressed, spoke, and carried themselves. Life imitating art, even the scenes of betrayal, example Tessio selling out the Corleones to Bartini, are somehow dignified and portrayed as a deviation from the norm for which honorable men understand and accept the consequences. The Godfather essentially introduced the masses to the Mafia, Cosa Nostra, and a language that has now become commonplace. Omerta, Consigliere, etc. Thanks to Colombo, though, the word mafia is never used. But what it introduced was a lie, a fiction, a sense of nobility that simply does not exist, has never existed, and is unlikely to ever exist. Drawing on Nicholas Pileggi and Henry Hill's account of Hill's life in the book Wise Guys, Goodfellas is rooted in the real-life story of powerful Lucchese captain Paul Vario, called Paul Cicero in the film, and his crew, for which Hill was an associate. Vario, whilst having his fingers in a number of rackets, was ostensibly a hijacker, controlling JFK, Idle Wild at the time, on behalf of the family and wider Cosa Nostra. The film touches on a number of true stories. The Lufthansa heist, Tommy Desimone, Tommy DeVito in the film, being whacked after being told he was going to be made, or Hill dealing coke and then turning informant. It references real places, example the Copacabana, and real made guys, example, Anthony, Fat Andy, Ruggiano, Michael Franzis, and Peter, Pete the Killer. Interestingly, out of the trio I mentioned, only Pete the Killer was a member of the Lucchese family Vario crew. Fat Andy was a Gambino, originally under Della Croce, and Franzis was a Colombo. It uses fairly authentic language and shows a lot of the dynamics between wise guys. So, on that level, it is highly realistic. The challenge with Goodfellas is that it's essentially Henry Hill's fantasy writ large, betraying him as a key figure in the crew and a central part to play in everything. He was a low-level associate with an addictive personality, wrestling with a drug addiction most of his life. Clear falsehoods in the film. He would never have been allowed to walk through the Copacabana like that. Heavy hitters and silent partners in the club like Sonny Franzis, yes but not someone like Hill. Prisons did not allocate luxury private sections for mafioso. Smuggling in a little better food? That happened. A feast prepared by inmates in private kitchens? Hell no. He was shown at the end of the film as being stuck in witness protection, but by the time the film came out, he'd been thrown out of the program for returning to drug dealing, and by many reports, he wasn't particularly close to Vario. Vario dealt with Jimmy Burke, Jimmy Conway in the film, but less a lower level associate like Hill, despite the film showing Vario as having an almost familial level relationship with Hill. Then we also have how key characters are portrayed, many of whom are made more human. Ray Liotta portrays Hill as often suave, poised, and charming. The real Hill was skittish, talked fast, and, whilst confident, did not have the physical presence of Liotta. Leota is probably the greatest PR triumph for Hill personally, making him look in times better than he was. 
Pesci arguably is at his greatest as the hugely violent DeVito Desimone, yet he makes him seem like a guy who simply flips out and goes way too far. The real Desimone was a true psychopath who killed at will and sometimes completely randomly. At 18, he killed Howard Goldstein, a random bystander, to prove a point he could kill at will. Hill even claimed in a later memoir that Desimone tried to rape Karen. If you believe Hill, of course. Paul Vario, played by the amazing Paul Sorvino, came across as a brooding yet paternistic figure who insisted people should do the right thing. For example, Henry going back to Karen. In practice, Vario himself had been convicted for rape back in 1937 and held a litany of assault and violence charges. Not exactly a man of honor. The Godfather may offer more stylized vision of mafia life, but the gritty authenticity of Goodfellas aligns far closer to brutal realities. Though both films blur fact and fiction in compelling ways, Goodfellas strips aside romantic pretensions. Its storytelling reflects the tawdry ambitions and craven violence binding criminals like Henry Hill and Paul Vario together. Not any higher code of honor. For more in-depth analysis and captivating content, check out my playlist of great videos exploring these iconic films. If you enjoyed this video, you won't want to miss out on the rest.